Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. <clears throat> so we're gonna uh, change uh, focus a little bit, change gears, so to speak, and go back to um, something that's near and dear to my heart that I loved for a long time, and that's uh, the Blood Rage Miniatures. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a Blood Rage uh, miniature YouTube video, uh, and I wanted to go back to it. Uh, by the way, I also got the latest uh, Kickstarter 2 expansion pack with all new monsters and gods of Asgard and the new stag clan. Um, they put all that together for the Blood Ridge digital game. And so um, they also have so much extra stuff. So I'm really excited about reviewing that. Uh, it's still in my garage, still unopened. So I think I'm going to do a little unboxing, you know, uh, review of that. So there are going to be some, you know, Blood Rage, um, Blood Rage YouTube videos by me coming up. Hopefully, those of you who are interested in that will appreciate it. They're special to me mainly because um, these are like professionally built miniatures, and so there's not a lot of those out there. Um, you know, one of the the uh, draws of miniature board games is, of course, the fun of painting them. Um, and so there's a lot of you know people who do paint them, but these are you know professional ones that I've commissioned, and so their quality is just a little bit better than the average tabletop uh, paint job. And so I think it's always kind of nice to see that, um, both for my you know personal taste, so I have something I can look at, um, and I can look back and hear my own voice talking about what I thought about at the time, but also for you know certain um, board game enthusiasts who are also um, aspiring painters themselves, I think watching you know some of these uh, videos, there's so few of them out there, you know, on exactly what you want. Um, it's always good to have more of them, um, so that you can see sort of what other people are doing, and you can incorporate some of those ideas for yourself. And I, I think there are there are quite a f there are a couple. Um, I don't want to say a lot, but there are a couple of like you know painting tutorials for Blood Rage miniatures. Uh, but again, these are by some of the the best in the business, in my opinion. One of them by Top Miniatures, which is a company based in Romania, uh, painted by Mina, who did the entire set for me. And then this one, of course, um, is even a little bit low, a little bit above that, because this is by Robert Carlson, who is an award-winning professional miniaturist uh, from Sweden. And he actually is the guy who painted the original resin masters that Cool Mini or Not used to sell Blood Rage when it first came out. So, you know, it doesn't get more authentic uh, than that. And, um, I mean, Robert can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm like the only private collector that he's agreed to sort of paint the whole set for. Uh, I don't know if he's ever done that for anybody else, just because, uh, number one, it's very expensive. Um, you don't, you know, commission one of the best miniaturist painters in the world, um, who usually works for industry, and who painted the original masters, uh, you know, it'll cost you a pretty penny. And then number two, you know, um, whether people actually want something like Blood Rage is a whole different, um, different conversation. Um, so in any case, this is by Robert Carlson, uh, Roglin Studios, in case you want to contact him or see some of his work. And um, this is the Sea Serpent. And he is one of the so-called uh, large um, monsters. And also in the, in the board game, I think there's a total of nine monsters total. Um, you can play them, obviously. Um, and four of them are so-called large ones. <clears throat> the other three are the fire giant, the ice giant, and the troll. And then there's five uh, smaller so-called monsters. The, uh, the dwarf chieftain, the soldier of hell, the Elf Lord, the Valkyrie, and the Volder Witch. And so all together there's nine. Um, if you want to play just the core, the core rules, the core game. Obviously expansion uh, adds a lot more monsters. Uh, but they were pretty expensive to get, you know. Um, I got Fenrir, the Hill Giant, all of that, and those were all painted by top miniatures because I wanted sort of like a unified um, vision for a complete, complete set. Um, but, you know, uh, this is the core set that you know uh, Robert is doing for me. So the Sea Serpent was sort of the last one that um, 
I did with him uh, that he wanted to paint of the four big ones. He, uh, he's already done the fire, the ice, and the troll for me. And I have YouTube videos of, of those. Um, and the reason we, you know, he wanted to do it last was because he was really not quite sure how to do it. He wasn't super confident uh, the job he was going to do. Uh, it has these crazy tentacles off the top of the head. And, you know, he didn't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about. I've never seen a sea serpent quite look like that. So it's a very kind of interesting um, design choice that makes a choice of paint kind of difficult to do. Um, and I think he wasn't super thrilled with the paint job he did even for the, you know, for the core Blood Rage, you know, master. Um, so he put it off until last, but I think uh, he did an amazing job. And he told me that, you know, at the end, he, he was really happy with the way it turned out. And uh, I agree with that. Uh, I never saw his original work of the Sea Serpent, but um, I'm very, very pleased with, it, with this. So kind of getting into the, the nitty gritty of it, um, you know, there's a lot of paint ups, paint ups of this on YouTube and on the forums on the internet. And it was really hard for me to find one for him to look at. Um, I think in the end, we finally just went to the source material and we looked at the, the cool mini or not like art book. But that wasn't great because it only had, I think, one picture and it was very dark and shadowy. And so that didn't give us a lot of help. But I was gonna say that for whatever reason, um, the sea serpent is one, in my opinion, one of the most often poorly painted minis from the Blood Ridge board game. I don't know why, but um, it's like they tend to paint him in such bright, garish colors that it's almost like ridiculous. Like I've seen so many bright green, bright yellow, purple, it's just crazy, um, and I don't know why that is. And so um, I did tell Robert for sure not to follow in those footsteps and to give me something that I can actually believe uh, has risen from the depths of the ocean, okay? So the first thing actually to look at, and luckily because this is plastic, you know, I have the ability to just pick him up with one hand and just show you this. Um, so the first step is just to kind of appreciate you know the base he kind of gave it a little bit of you know like glistening texture these are supposed to be waves uh, the sea serpent is crashing through the waves so um you know first step is to um you know paint the frothing um sea did a great job there i added a very nice sort of glistening effect um so it looks wet you know it, it has a good like again, uh, effect of, of uh, wetness, okay? He chose this nice sort of dark red orangey color for the tentacles to taper into. And that's a design choice that I think um, the color coordinates pretty nicely with the sea serpent's colors himself. So I'm okay with that. Um, the tentacles are always weird. You know, like if you paint them just one color, it looks kind of boring. So you do want to paint them a different color, but if you go too garish, it, it just looks ridiculous. So I think again, um, Robert, you know, chose a nice, reasonable color. You can see it, how it kind of you know blends from the, the almost a gray, right, and a light gray around the roots, and then it gets darker and darker, and it becomes kind of this orangey red. So that's fine. I like that. I like the fact that the body is not bright green or yellow. You know, it's not you know very flashy. It, it looks like the coloration of something that can come from the ocean. Um, let me go a little bit deeper here. Hopefully you can appreciate, again, the back, okay? And then, of course, um, you, know, you have the front, a lot of the scaling work and the, the, the texturing, very nice. And then finally, um, the money shot is the mouth, the eyes. Very, very good job there. He put in a little bit of drool in there as well, sort of the glistening. I think you can see the glistening drool effects, the teeth, the fangs, all of that. So I went really, really close to him, um, but if you just kind of move it a little bit further away, uh, everything looks very, very nice, very, very beautiful. 
I'm just going to sort of slowly turn him around. So this is sort of what he looks like from the back. And then from the side. And then from the other side as well. Right here. The magic of these um, miniature painters is that, again, they work almost sometimes what they do. And I don't know, it's like a trick. It must be like I said. It's like the, um, the Society of Magicians, right? It's like a trade secret. Um, they do a lot of like, in my opinion, like impressionistic, impressionism type paint jobs where if you go super close, it kind of ruins the effect because you kind of see all the little brush strokes and you know, it's almost like you go too close and all you're seeing are like the, the colors and the, you know, nothing looks too amazing or spectacular it's like okay you know that's fine it's a little bit boring but then um what happens is when you back up just a little bit i mean this is a miniature look at my hand so it is a miniature it's not like a big you know like a big um statue but if you just back up like a couple inches all of a sudden it just looks a whole lot better it looks amazing and this is something that um you see in certain impressionist, you know, impressionist paintings where going too close to the painting, all you see are just splotches of color. But then when you look at it from farther away, all of a sudden you get to appreciate the forest, so -called, you know, the, the so-called forest. And you see again the, the totality of all the effects and all those little splotches of paint and these rough strokes coalesce into something very beautiful. And um, one of the things that the miniature professionals do super well is that they somehow are able to paint things that normally um, you are relying on the environment to give you. So somehow they're able to actually paint shadows, uh, which is crazy, but it's true. They're able to paint highlights. They're able to paint the gleam of light on metal and they're able to paint metal without using metallic paint uh, this is something called like nmm like non-metallic metal i think is what they call it and it's really really hard to do um, obviously the shortcut is like if you want gold you paint gold if you want metal you have to there's a metal paint right but these guys somehow um, create combinations of paint and they somehow do it so that when you look back a little bit, it looks for all the world like um, light gleaming off of armor, but the, there's no light. Like you basically could um, have the you know, mini again, like here with no real light, um, no sunlight, and it still looks like it's light gleaming off armor. It's a pretty crazy effect and it's kind of hard to describe, um, but you'll know what I mean if you were to see some examples of that. Uh, so anyways, this is an example of that. The sea monster just looks really amazing. I'm really happy with it. Um, and again, I can see it by just videotaping it, how amazing it looks just from this distance. And so I hope that um, you can also appreciate it as well. So this is the sea monster from Blood Rage. It's the one that uh, Robert Carlson felt the least confident in, but I think it turned out actually really really great and um, you know he himself was pretty proud of it as well and when, when he showed it to me he's like again this turned out a lot better than i thought it would and uh, i think uh, this serpent can go next to the other um, big monster so to speak without any shame so to speak and i'm going to put up a little video just sort of uh, showing uh, him with the other three guys uh, separately but this is the sea serpent from the cool mini or not uh, blood rage board game painted by uh, Swedish miniature master Robert Carlson. So I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, take care.